On this episode of the Carolina Sports Guy, we're going to take a look back at the 1991 East Carolina Pirates. 11-1 Peach Bowl winner. Before we get into today's content, make sure you subscribe. It doesn't cost anything, folks. Give me that big thumbs up, like button. Leave me some comments. Let me know what you like about today's video or what you didn't. And by all means, hit that bell notification to be no notified of further content, such as uh, stuff like you're seeing in today's video. All right, folks, kind of wanting to look back, and since I've been covering, you know, uh, looking episodes back at UNC Charlotte and their Final Four run in 77, and uh, 16 greatest players in UNC Toriel basketball history in the 70s, and looking at Duke's Final Four in 1978, and kind of look at the South Carolina Clemson rivalry, I said, well, let me go ahead and let Uncle Chucky do something on the East Carolina Pirates. The 1991 season for the East Carolina Pirates was by far the greatest season the school ever had. Bill Lewis was the head coach. We finished that season ranked number nine in the country in the AP poll, and they were 11-1. We're going to do a game-by-game -game breakdown. Now, first game they end up, they have to go to Illinois, a Big Ten school, August 31st. And they end up playing Illinois. They get behind early, but ECU makes a comeback. And as we get late in this ball game, I mean, you know, they were, they were trailing, I'm trying to remember, but I know at one time it was like 31 to 10 or 31 17. And, and East Carolina comes back. And they were covered in an onside kick with a couple minutes to go. And I remember the players getting up, jumping up and down, celebrating. They're excited because they can feel the momentum shift in this game. And where they were getting the ball at was pretty much, you know, past midfield, and it was going to be good for the Pirates. And then they referees threw a 15-yard penalty and called it uh, unsportsmanlike conduct, the Miami rule, uh, excessive celebration which I call total bullshit. I'm sorry it was. Now, I don't want to say that that took the wind out of the sails, but it was defeating to lose those 15 yards, start back like they did, lost just a little bit of momentum. Now, would they have scored? I don't know. The way they were going, though, could they have scored? Maybe a little bit better field position with the time left, a touchdown here. You never know what would have happened. But it did ruin the momentum they had at that point in time. So they started the season on one. September 14th, they played their first game in Greenville, and they beat Memphis State 20 to 13. Uh, it's kind of hard to see then how good this team would be. Uh, like I said, Jeff Blake was quarterback. Uh, you had Robert Jones, a great middle linebacker on the squad, and just really didn't know how good they were. September 21st, they go down to Orlando and they play UCF, and this is before UCF is really playing FBS football. They're kind of still in that. Uh, championship series, the FCS series, and East Carolina prevails 47 to 25. Now here's an interesting game. We go back to Greenville, September 28, playing South Carolina. Now at this point in time, this is around the time South Carolina is getting ready to join the SEC. In fact, I think they have, but because they left that ACC, which we'll get into later um, on another episode, they left the ACC in '71. Their football and basketball, but really their football suffered because they were independent. And so even though we're talking about 20 years later in 91, South Carolina's had some pretty bad years. I mean, they're 0 11 years. They've always had loyal fans and sell out 80,000 seat stadium even with new wins. Um, but I remember some South Carolina players were looking at East Carolina's jersey, seeing East Carolina, and saying it was easy Carolina. And... Uh, East Carolina took a tumble that day. That was a big mistake by some of the South Carolina players not taking them serious. And East Carolina wins that game 31 to 20. So at this point in time, East Carolina's 2 and 1. Then they have a game in Greenville against Akron, which is a max school. East Carolina has no problem prevailing there on October 5th, uh, 56 to 20. Now this is where it gets interesting because right now you're looking at a team that 4 and 1. And you're looking at that one loss against Illinois and not getting a lot of publication, notification, notices as well. Um, I'm going to play number 15, Syracuse. And a lot of people say, this is where we're going to get off the bus right here. 
and their plan had to carry them in Syracuse. East Carolina pulls this game out 23-20. This is going to turn some heads going 5-1. Then we got a week off. October 26, play another school that was in the Big East at that time. Pittsburgh, number 23 in the country, which Syracuse and Pittsburgh now in the ACC. But they played this game in Greenville, and East Carolina makes a come from behind win. They went 24-23. Fans storm the field, tear down the goalpost. You know, they're looking at a 6-1 record right now, looking pretty good. Come by the following week in Greenville, and they're playing Tulane. And it was a 38-28 win. It wasn't anything over impressive. Tulane didn't have a great team that year. But they're still holding stride at 7-1. and one. Then November 9th, they're playing a team they played more than any other school in East Carolina football history. And a team that's beaten them more times than they've beaten them, that's Southern Miss. But they're going to go down to Southern Miss, and we're going to take it to them. And East Carolina wins this game 48-20. to 20. And like I said, you know, you're, you're sitting here looking at 8-1. and one. Things are looking good. People are starting to clamor and talk about them being ranked in the top 25. And I believe by now they are in the top 25, creeping up into the teens. Now, November 16th, they go to Blacksburg, Virginia, at Virginia Tech. A lot of key uh, commentators are saying Virginia Tech's going to win this game. East Carolina goes in and beats Virginia Tech and Blacksburg 24-17. So now they're 9-1. So then by November 23rd, we're coming around Thanksgiving. I remember this is before you had a lot of conference championship games and uh, you didn't play as many games, you had a couple games less. And you had a lot of people floating around there as independent, and East Carolina was one at this time. And they're going to play Cincinnati at Cincinnati. And, you know, the bowl scouts are going to start looking at this team thinking, can they go 10-1? And, and they do. They beat Cincinnati 30 to 19 in Cincinnati. Now, good thing is by now they're climbing up into the top 10. And a lot of people look at that first game in Illinois if it was played again, they'd probably win that game. And a lot of people think, well, man, if they wouldn't have lost that game, they might have been playing for a big bowl, you know, like a New Year's Day, January 2nd, at this point in time, the bigger bowls. But they end up landing the January 1st, 1992 spot in Fulton County Stadium, right before the Georgia Dome's built in Atlanta, at the Peach Bowl. And they got to play an arch nemesis, North Carolina State, coming out of the ACC. And a lot of East Carolina fans wanted this game. They felt, you know, we'll prove that we're good enough to be as good as any ACC school. But at the same time, East Carolina, with their schedule, the NC State play a more daunting schedule, and they had more top recruits. This game goes back and forth back and forth. And finally, East Carolina pulls this game out of the end, beating NC State 37-34. Thrilling win. They finish 11-1. And the thing about it is they end up finishing number nine in the polls. Some people think they should have been ranked even higher than that number nine ranking. And like I said, if they somehow could have mustered a win in Illinois when they recovered that onside kick and, and somehow scored a touchdown, whether they would have gone for two and won because somehow won that game and finished 12 and 0. Maybe that number nine ranking, but maybe they don't play NC State in the Peach Bowl. Maybe it's a higher bowl and they're playing a tougher opponent. But let's just say they did. A number nine ranking could have probably been more like a number five or number six. But it definitely was the greatest season in East Carolina Pirate football history. Now, significant players for East Carolina at that time that played for the Pirates, quarterback Jeff Blake. He was drafted in the sixth round by the New York Jets. And I know he also played for a few other teams, notably the Cincinnati Bengals. And, you know, he started some games in his career. He was always looking as a journeyman backup, as a second stringer. But he did have a season or two where he was the man. He was the number one star. But he had a beautiful deep ball. He had a strong arm. And he was someone I just didn't think got the recognition. Uh, great, great arm. Um, Luke Fisher, a tight end that was drafted in the eighth round, which we don't have eight rounds anymore, by the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, Hunter Gallimore was a wide receiver. I think he played some Canadian football. He didn't get in the NFL, but he played really significant time. He was really a good player and instrumental in this 11-1 season. Deion Johnson, another wide receiver. He was a 10th round draft pick of the Houston Oilers back in 1992. 
And Chris Hall, defensive back, he was the ninth round draft pick of the Dallas Cowboys. Didn't last long a cup of coffee. And of course, in the 1993 draft, first round, the number 24 pick, the Dallas Cowboys took middle linebacker Robert Jones, consensus All-American. And I know he played for those Super Bowl teams that, you know, the three Super Bowl teams they had for the, for the Cowboys. And I remember the Super Bowl against Buffalo because he didn't run and shoot. I don't think he got in the game as much because of the type of defense we had to run. But through the season, he was instrumental in, in uh, being the starting middle linebacker for those Cowboys. Uh, we also had John Jett, the punter. Now, he wasn't drafted, but he played for Minnesota in 92, and he was on those Dallas Cowboy championship teams 1993 to 1996. So he got himself three rings. And he finished his career in 1997 to 2003, punting for Detroit. And when this season ended, the terrible thing was Bill Lewis would leave and end up going on to Georgia Tech. But Steve Logan, to me, even though he did not have the great season Bill Lewis did, he had a longer career at East Carolina. He was more dedicated to East Carolina. And um, he would go on probably be, to me, the greatest coach East Carolina had over a longevity standpoint, not necessarily with a record or key wins. And there you have it, folks. I look at the 1991 East Carolina Pirates finishing 11-1, winning the Peach Bowl. What do you think of today's video? If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Give me a big thumbs up. Leave me some comments. Hit the bell notification to be notified of more content like today. I will see you on another episode of the Carolina Sports Guy.